Friends, I invite you to pray with us in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, today we celebrate the third Sunday in the holy season of Lent. And as always, we call to mind our sins. And during Lent, we are reciting the Confitior, and I invite you to join along with us as we say, I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words and what I have done and what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Kiri God, author of every mercy and of all goodness, who in fasting, prayer, and almsgiving have shown us a remedy for sin. Look graciously on this confession and our lowliness that we who are bowed down by our conscience may always be lifted up by your mercy through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. In those days, God delivered all these commandments. I, the Lord, am your God, you, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, that place of slavery. You shall not have other gods besides me. You shall not carve idols for yourselves in the shape of anything in the sky above or on the earth below or in the waters beneath the earth. You shall not bow down before them or worship them, for I, the Lord, your God, am a jealous God, inflicting punishment for their father's wickedness on the children of those who hate me, down to the third and fourth generation, but bestowing mercy down to the thousandth generation on the children of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain, for the Lord will not leave unpunished the one who takes his name in vain. Remember to keep holy the Sabbath day. Six days you may labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. No work may be done then either by you or your son or daughter, or your male or female slave, or your beast, or by the alien who lives with you. In six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea and all that is in them. But on the seventh day he rested. That is why the Lord has blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. Honor your father and your mother, that you may have a long life in the land which the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not kill. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife, 
nor his male or female slave, nor his ox or ass, nor anything else that belongs to him. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, Jews demand signs and Greeks look for wisdom. But we proclaim Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles, but to those who are called Jews and Greeks alike, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. For the foolishness of God is wiser than human wisdom, and the weakness of God is stronger than human strength. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. with you and with your spirit reading from the holy gospel according to john glory to you o lord since the passover of the jews was near jesus went up to jerusalem he found in the temple area those who sold oxen sheep and doves as well as the money changers seated there he made a whip out of cords and drove them all out of the temple area with the sheep and oxen, and spilled the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. And to those who sold doves, he said, 
take these out of here and stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples recalled the words of scripture, zeal for your house will consume me. At this, the Jews answered and said to him, what sign can you show us for doing this? Jesus answered and said to them, destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews said, this temple has been under construction for 46 years and you will raise it up in three days? But he was speaking about the temple of his body. Therefore, when he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this and they came to believe the scripture and the word Jesus had spoken. While he was in Jerusalem for the feast of Passover, many began to believe in his name when they saw the signs he was doing. But Jesus would not trust himself to them because he knew them all and did not need anyone to testify about human nature. He himself understood it well. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Places of worship are sacred to all religions. They all have some place uh, to gather to worship their God, to worship their understanding of God and to share their, their faith together. We know the Muslims have their mosques. To the Jews, the temple was the place where they believed God was present. And of course, since the time of Jesus, all Christian churches, Christian religions have churches. The church is very important to the church building, that is, very important to a community. I, that's been brought home to us very forcefully in the last 20 months, 12 months, when because of the pandemic, the church has been closed so much. And people do not have the opportunity to come and into the environment that is unique and special of every church, a place of quiet serenity where they can commune with their God. Jesus, like all good Israelites, went to the temple to worship on their great occasions. And uh, uh, this, once he went up, as we hear in the gospel today, and he was irate because it had been commercialized. Money sellers, money changers uh, for the sacrifices were all over the place. And he was angry with them. It, as far as I can remember, that's about the only time in the scriptures where we read that Jesus was angry. And he used a whipcord to get them out of here. Totally unlike the Jesus we read about in every other page. These people, he said, honor me with their lips, but, but their hearts are far from me. But the church had, uh, the Christian church, had no buildings for 300 years. It, was, it wasn't until Constantine at the beginning of the fourth century gave property for the building of the first Christian church which is the location of the Lateran Basilica one of the four great basilicas in Rome the church in the, in the scriptures has a different connotation not really taking from the importance of the physical structure. But St. Paul says that the new church 
is the body of Christ. Christ dwells in all of us, individually and collectively. There we gather to hear the, the Word of God proclaimed to us, to reflect on it, to pray together, and to experience one another's faith. It's uh, that this is most important. Jesus is not just present in the tabernacle. If that were the case, we would only be near him one hour of the week. No, he's with us always. Behold, I am with you all days till the end of the world. And not only Jesus, but he promised, he gave us the Holy Spirit. Paul says, don't forget, your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit and the Spirit of God lives in you. Christ puts it even more, more uh, fully, more easy to understand, I think. Yeah. He says, make your home in me as I make my home in you. Make my home in you. And make your home in me as I make my home in you. Jesus, once we're baptized and unless we commit a serious sin, break one of the commandments that we heard about there in the, in the first reading, Christ is with us. That's the seriousness of, us, of a major sin. We drive Christ out of our lives. We excommunicate ourselves. But otherwise, he's with us always, in the ups and downs of life, in the good times and in the bad. He's been with us all these past months when we lived in fear of the virus, when over half a million people have died. Christ is always with us, in joy and in sorrow. Therefore, we know we keep churches, and you find this in every church. Churches are kept clean and neat, and uh, uh, flowers are what the, like here we are about the magnificent uh, wind, uh, windows. It, it really is a place of prayer, a place where we sense the presence of God. Well, likewise, we ourselves and our souls must be kept clean and neat, and always ready for Christ. We must be rid of serious sin. We must avoid lust, greed, pride, selfishness, un unforgiveness, arrogance, self-righteousness, in short, we must be loving people, grateful people, grateful to God, concerned about others, compassionate, forgiving, and generous. During the Jubilee year of, of the, uh, the first uh, of this century, we had a Jubilee year, and there were they had a special prayer for it, which I'd like to share with you. It had these special words. Transform us to be your word more profoundly. Reconcile us so that enemies become friends. Awaken us to the sacred. Nurture our relationships. Enliven our parishes. Reunite our families. Fill us with joy. 
to celebrate the fullness of life. Empower us to be a community of love, growing always in your likeness by the grace of Christ our Lord. Now we'll recite the Apostles' Creed for the rest of Holy Lent. We'll pray this ancient prayer. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Let us bring the prayers of all the faithful to God who led the chosen people out of slavery and raised Christ from the dead. For the church, led by Pope Francis, that we might cleanse ourselves of corruption and division as we renew our commitment to the mission Jesus left us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That women around the world might be free from abuse, harassment, and unfair discrimination. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who will be initiated into the church this Easter, that they might always find in the Lord the words of everlasting life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For all who are ill, including Conrad Manures, Lilia Tan, Tina Wilson, Brian Nguyen, and those written in our Book of Intentions. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the eternal rest of all the deceased, including Father Joseph Kana, Jamil French, Gabriel Barrios Zavala, Jesse Yap, Miguel Viquis and Bunny Whaler, and those written in our Book of Intentions. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the prayers we hold in the silence of our hearts and all those written in our Parish Book of Intentions may be answered. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Blessed are you, O God. You guide us with our commandments and comfort us when we fall. Listen to the prayers we make and grant them according to your holy will. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen.
pray, my dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice at your hand to the praise and glory of his name for our good and that of all his church. Be pleased, O Lord, with these sacrificial offerings and grant that we who beseech pardon for our own sins may take care to forgive our neighbor. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord. Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For when he asked the Samaritan woman for water to drink, he had already created the gift of faith within her. And so ardently did he thirst for her faith that he kindled in her the fire of divine love. And so we too give you thanks and with the angels praise your mighty deeds as we acclaim. Sanctus, Sanctus, Sanctus Dominus Deus, indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Jose, our Archbishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 
Let us pray to our most merciful Father in heaven as we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you. My peace I give you. Look not on our sins, Lord, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with, with your spirit. So offer our neighbor a sign of peace. He said. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. My dear brothers and sisters, behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. my dear brothers and sisters, will make a spiritual act of communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you and unite myself to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. As we receive the pledge of things yet hidden in heaven and are nourished while still on earth with the bread that comes from on high, we humbly entreat you, O Lord, that what is being brought about in us in mystery 
may come to true completion. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And uh, really no announcements other than just we encourage everyone in our journey of Lent. It's such a great time to step back. We hear the word retreat. We step back and we realize how good God is to us, how many blessings. And then hopefully we're entering into a little more prayer, a little more almsgiving, a little more fasting, so we can be a little more aware of God's amazing love for us. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may all mighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. This holy Mass is ended. Let us go in peace. Thanks be to God.